Howdy folks, Troy with V-Twins, the V8's coming back on for another video on how to paint the trim on your car, whether it be chrome or stainless steel, how to paint it on there so it stays and doesn't peel off. I'll give you a step-by-step, -step, so let's get at it. All right, folks, so in the automotive world that we like to live in, I speak for myself anyways, we all run into a situation where we want to paint a piece of trim uh, black. It may be stainless steel, it might be aluminum, it may be chromed, whatever. You, you, sometimes, like I have these examples right here, which we're going to use today, is um, these are cowl vent panels for my Imperial project, and there's a couple of small areas in here that need to be blacked out. These were sent out and were re-chromed, and as you can imagine, chrome is a really difficult uh, surface to get paint to adhere to. So there's some things that we have to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to take and sand the area that we wanted to apply the finish to. So in other words, you've got an area where you want to put your paint, you're going to want to take um, probably some 400 grit at least, maybe even 360, and really sand the heck out of it. You can use the step-by-step -step process, whereas you would sand it with like say maybe 220, and then go to like 360, to 400, like that. You can do it like that. You could sand it really coarse if you really didn't care what it looked like, but you wanted to have some bite. That's the first thing you're going to want to do. Okay, so now that you've got your uh, your surface sanded. What I like to do is I like to use fine line tape around that area. Once I get that done, then I'm going to mask the area. So we'll get at that. We'll get these things masked off and we'll move forward from there. So we're going to mask these off. We're going to use some masking paper from my handy dandy masking machine. And we're going to wrap these up nice because we don't want any paint to be in the areas that we don't want them to be, and we're going to have some tape. I'm just going to come right up against my fine line tape here. This doesn't have to be like a huge kind of project, but much like anything else, the better prepared you are, the better the results will be. So, take these up like this. It's like wrapping a Christmas present, seeing how we are in that season right at the moment while I'm doing this video. So, might as well practice my uh, present wrapping skills. And as you can see, I've got my first part is all masked off, and now I'll just do the second one. All right, and like everything else in this business, there's always multiple ways to do anything like in life. So I've got my two pieces all masked off and ready to go. And now, like I said, there's two ways that you can do this. You can do this the quick and easy way, or you can do it, maybe not the right way, but a better way. The quick and easy way is, the product I like to use is Sem Trim Black. This is specifically made to use on your trim. It gives it the right level of gloss and flatness. It's not super flat, it's not a gloss black. It's just kind of like in between. It makes for a nice finish. So I do like to use this, and it is designed to adhere to these types of materials. But if you really want to make sure that your product, that your paint is really going to stick, I would recommend a direct to metal primer. And my favorite direct to metal primer is, you guessed it, House of Color KD3000. This happens to be 3001. It's black because I'm going to put black over. I always like to color coat 
my primer sealer with whatever color I'm going to put on. It makes for an easier coverage. So in other words, if I'm painting black, I'll use black primer. If I'm painting red, I'll use red primer and things of that nature. Um, the folks at House of Color have all types of different um, colors and you can cocktail them so that you can mix them and get uh, the colors you're really looking for. Like when I did the Imperial, I needed a turquoise, so I mixed some blue and some yellow, and I made myself a turquoise color so that I had nice coverage for that car. So bear that in mind. Now, with using the, um, the House of Color product here, it, uh, it requires to be catalyzed and reduced. What I like to do, uh, one of the other things you can do, I should say, if you want to try and save a little bit of time, is you can spray this primer on, let it sit for 10, maybe 15 minutes, put a second coat on there, put a couple of coats on, and then before it fully dries, you can go ahead and come right back on it with the SEM, and it'll give you a chemical bond. In other words, the two products will bond chemically because the primer is not dry, and the paint is obviously wet, and they will bite into each other. If you want to do it the step-by-step -step way, or you want to let it dry, you want to fill in some scratches or whatever, you can let it dry, wait till the next day, sand it, and then apply your SEM. And I would recommend that you use a scuff pad to sand the SEM, or maybe a um, 600 grit paper would work well. Because the SEM is really thin, you don't want to use a coarse paper because you'll really be able to see those scratches. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this, I'm going to mix up a really small batch of the, of the House of Color direct to steel primer. I'm going to prime a little bit of that on there and I'm going to use the wet on wet method with the SEM and we'll see how this comes out. Okay, so we are now back and I am going to show you what I got going on. I have my surface is all prepped and ready to go. I have decided that I'm going to use the airbrush to do these small areas and mix up an extremely small batch of this primer. So the ratio for this primer is four parts of the primer surfacer itself and then it's, um, it's one part of the KD3000, the hardener, and then it's also, uh, it could be one or two parts of this. One part's a primer, two parts it's a sealer. I mean this is an extremely small amount. So, to do this, I use these little um, eyedroppers that I buy online. And then I just used a dropper of, I kept track of how many cc's that I was putting in there, and then I put the appropriate amount of catalyzer or hardener and the appropriate amount of reducer. So now I have that all in there, and then I'm just going to stir that up and mix it up very, very well, like this. And then I'm going to put it in my airbrush, and I'm going to apply it to these panels. Now, um, before we get involved in the application, I do have to touch on one other thing, is we do want to clean that surface with a pre-cleaner. I also like to use House of Colors KC10. It's a pre-cleaner. You put a little bit on a rag, wipe it on there, wipe it off. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Now this being such a small area, basically I'm just going to wet the corner of my rag. I'm going to wipe my areas to remove any wax, grease, anything that might be on there. And then I'm just going to take an opposite corner of the rag and wipe those areas. So now I know that I'm nice and clean, I don't have any debris on there, and I'm ready to go ahead and do my airbrushing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my paint in my airbrush and we're going to spray this on here and I will use a close-up camera so you can act actually watch me apply this. So I'm just going to take my black primer and put it in my airbrush like that and then I can put my top on and I'll be ready to airbrush into these surfaces. So I got my airbrush here and I test it out. Yes I'm getting coverage and I'm gonna go ahead and start working into these areas. You can see how my airbrush is going on there. I'm just gonna go 
all the way around and I'm going to really work on getting my edges. I want to make sure when I, especially when I use this, is that I am getting this primer on here wet. And the reason I say that is, is that direct to metal primer has an etching chemical in it. That's what creates the real strong bond between the, um, the primer and the surface. So if you put it on too dry, the etching properties don't have a chance to really bite in because they're not wet. So this is what I'm doing. And now I got it all nice and wet. Now I'm going to let this flash. I'll put another coat on here and we'll, uh, we'll see what we got. So here we go. We're going to go for a second coat. As you can see, um, what we've got is a little bit of primer on here. I can see some of the spots where I am uh, still seeing a little of the chrome around the edges. So I'm trying to work all of those edges. And like I said, I want to try and keep this primer wet so that it bites into the surface. Sorry if I'm stutter talking here, but this does require just the slightest bit of concentration. Alright, so now I got that, my second coat is on there pretty wet, and we'll wait that out just a little bit, we'll let it flash. In the meantime, I'll get my trim black out, and I will start agitating it, or shake it, and then we'll, uh, we'll lay right at it. Alright, so while this dries, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my can of trim black, and I'm going to shake the hell out of it. Now, I buy this stuff by the case, so sometimes... You know, it sits for a while, so you really want to make sure you really, really shake the heck out of it to get it all stirred up. And then once it's all stirred up, we're going to add, we're going to spray a couple of coats on here. You know, like the uh, backyard paint jobs you probably did when you were a little kid. And um, that's going to be that. We're going to let it dry, and then tomorrow we'll be able to put these pieces on the car. You'll be able to see how they are. The thing that, that's nice about this is we'll have some good adhesion, especially in this cowl area where people will tend to spray high pressure water, maybe a pressure washer or something like that might hit this area at some point in time in the future. And I don't want it to be a situation where uh, my client washes his car and this paint comes flying off. He's not going to be very impressed. So we're going to make sure we get it on there. We're going to make sure we get it on there right. Here we are, we're back. My, uh, my parts have somewhat flashed off. There's still a little bit, I wouldn't want to touch them or anything like that. You know, it's slightly uh, flashed off. And now I am going to go ahead and apply my trim black. And boom, that's all there is to it. This is pretty on there, pretty wet. I'll bring the hand down over, I'll kind of show you. I mean, it's a quick blast, but um, it's really, uh, it's going to bite right into that. So probably let this flash, one more coat, and we're done. Yeah, now you can see how wet that's been laid on there. So we're just going to give that a little bit of time to flash off, and then we'll come right back on it, and then we'll be good to go. We flashed off nicely. We're going we're gonna to go for a second shot on this here, and um, then we just got to wait for it to dry. Kind of anticlimactic, but um, yeah, so there we go. So what we'll do is we'll let this dry, we'll peel it off, you'll get the reveal, and I'll give you the recap. All right, so we're back. I got my pieces all painted, and one of the other things I wanted to talk to you about was when I like to remove my masking tape and paper. And I like to do it before it gets really hard or really dries completely. So in other words, I like the paint to be soft for the simple reason is soft things tend to be flexible and stretch. And when you have a hard line like this against this chrome, adhesion is very, very hard. 
So what I like to do is I like to peel these off while it's still somewhat soft. That makes it less of a chance for me to peel a big chunk of it off of the chrome. In other words, I should be able to roll it right off and get a nice clean edge rather than if it's very hard and almost like a solid, it's going to want to um, maybe chip along the edges and I won't get that clean edge. So I like to do it now rather than wait too long. Okay, so I'm gonna, I already removed all of the paper off of here and now I'm just down to my fine line tape. So I'm gonna remove it in the order that I had put it on. So I just take and roll all my tape back off like this. And you can see because I have a soft paint surface, this should roll right off of here really nice. And there it is. The hardest thing is getting the tape off of your hands. That looks pretty darn good. Come down here, we'll get this guy. It might be a little bit of glue residue from the tape. I will wash that off at a later date when I know that this paint is very hard and it's completely cured. But yeah, look at that. So there we go. There's that. Now we can work on the other one. Looking pretty darn good. All right, so there's our video on painting the chrome trim. I have a whole list of the products that you'd need to do this job will be down in the links below. Um, please check out my links. Please, if you're going to do the project and buy the products, please use my links. It helps me out. It doesn't cost you any more. And I would really appreciate the support for doing these videos. So any comments or questions, please respond in the, uh, in the comment section below. If you do have a question, I will respond to you. I try and respond to everybody. Uh, that way there, if you, you're trying to do something and you want to know how to do it, uh, feel free. Even if it's something else that's not related to this and you've got something else going on, I have a lot of areas of expertise in the automotive and automotive refinishing field. So feel free to ask me anything. Check out my other videos on my YouTube channel. Shows you how to do all kinds of auto body stuff, all kinds of mechanical stuff. My name is Troy Kane. I'm with V-Twins, the V8s.com. Uh, please check me out on my website. You can check me out on Instagram, um, on Facebook, and I'm also on TikTok. If you like to do crazy videos, I have some kind of funny ones on there. So uh, please check me out. Please like and subscribe, and uh, good luck on your project.